what's up everybody welcome back to the channel it's your boy here joel mogisha if you're new to the channel kindly subscribe and uh, hit that like button so guys today we jump to burkina faso and uh, we look at the president of burkina faso ibrahim Traore, the revolutionary leader that has been actually shaking global world politics because of the way he's actually leading his country burkina faso and uh, this man is known as a man that is fighting a great cause in africa he's fighting against imperial he's fighting against neo-colonialism he's fighting against you know the western powers trying to meddle in african affairs so guys he's trying also to nationalize a lot of the mineral resources that have been actually looted for years you know that have not been benefiting the people and the citizens of burkina faso now once you are a leader like that you know many people are not happy once you are a leader like that especially in these third world countries or developing countries you know many people are not happy you can piss off a lot of people and most of the time we see that such leaders actually are most of the time taken out and now ibrahim Traore has come out publicly and spoken on national television of Burkina Faso on the attempt against his life to, you know, I cannot say that on this platform. So they tried to uh, him actually a lot of time right now. It's about five times since he actually gained power. Now he has been speaking publicly and addressing what he has been doing for the country so guys let's jump into today's video and then we're gonna come back and talk about this as a young man i cannot be at the top of the state and maybe want to find myself under mangroves eating rusumbala like the others that is to say to accept to forget your youth to accept to forget your life and to devote yourself entirely to your country one of the risks is this situation that we are living, destabilization. Because if you want to straighten the boat in such a country, inevitably you have to survive. And by surviving to straighten the boat, you create internal and external enemies. So we have to face this situation of destabilization, of murder, and of everything. Because we have affected the interests of many people. There is social inequality, there is corruption, there is poor management of public health. If we try to straighten all this, inevitably, we will affect the individual interests of some people. And these people are often rich. They have money, they use it to manipulate often poor people to put them at risk. This is internal. And these same people do not hesitate to coalesce with the imperialist forces who spend their time trying to impoverish us. The other side are these external forces. There are many countries today that we have on our backs. We have no choice. We have to do it. If we want our country to be independent, if we want our sovereignty, if we want Burkina Faso to eat at their expense, if we want our children to go to school without paying a penny, if we want tomorrow the malaria, which is one of the most common diseases in Burkina Faso, so that we can heal our population, in some words, at zero cost. Some dreams that we have, but we will have to make a lot of concessions. We will have to prevent certain powers from pillaging us, and that creates a lot of enemies. So we are prepared for these situations. We live them as normal, in fact. It does not frighten us, it does not scare us. It still gives us the courage to move forward. Because through these events, we know that the directive line that we have chosen is the best line for our country, for our people. So we live it like that. And the plotters, actually, we have spent two years raising awareness, talking, putting people on guard. But it was necessary for the Burkinabe to see for themselves how far certain Burkinabe can go against the country. If we had started to serve in a certain way, it is not obvious that you will understand us. 
Captain Thomas Sankara was misunderstood at some point. Maybe because they started strong. But we had to let the people see, understand what these plotters are. Communicate with the people. The audience of Bobo Durasso would like to know what the fate reserved for these plotters is. As we said, from this moment on, I will not go into details. Everyone will take responsibility. If someone takes such a step, he assumes all the consequences. We will not advise anyone or put people on guard. Let's go back to the case of Barcelago. An audience member would like to know what really happened. But I think Barcelogo was personally targeted, because Barcelogo and I have a history. Barcelogo and the situation of the country have a history. In July 2022, you may be able to contact Barcelogo. I challenged a lot of orders to intervene so that Barcelogo does not fall. I sacrificed a lot of things to Barcelogo. This is the place for me to thank a lot of people who supported us in our maneuver. I think they targeted Barcelogo because it was going to affect me. That was the objective. I do not want to go into certain details. Maybe one day we will have the opportunity to talk about it. Your reaction to the speech on the political orientation of the fire of Captain Thomas Sankara is a concern of Ile Boudou of Ouagadougou. It is true. We have chosen the date of October 2nd for the launch of the Patriotic Day of Patriotic Engagement. It is precisely to corroborate with the DOP. Because this speech was a reference. I think that some countries far from our sub-region use this reference to develop. They make us understand because they accused a lot of things of this speech. We are inspired by this news and we adapt it to the context. There are some things in its time, in 1983, that cannot be done today. But we adapt it step by step. Thomas Sankara was too much ahead of his time. I think that all this means that he was not understood, because he saw things that others did not have the opportunity to see. His vision was much more ahead. But today we realize that we should have, we should have, every time we ask ourselves these questions, should we not have, should we not have, it has already happened. But I think that it is a new speech. It is the same vision for a total sovereignty of our country. I think that we should join this launch. I would like to know what is the morale of the troops with this validity of destabilization. I would say that the morale of the troops is at a fixed level. Because to engage to defend the country, you know that when you're a soldier, there is another state of mind. It is natural in the army. To get up, take your backpack, your weapon and go to the front is not given to everyone. But generally in the head of the soldier, when he leaves, it is with pride. He knows what can happen, but it is with pride that he leaves. And today, with what we have put in place, we are trying to make an effort through the support of the people. Many soldiers are really proud to be soldiers. That is why they give their body and soul. And with all the support that the people also make in their place, I think that it can only boost the morale. It is true that this situation of destabilization does not affect them, but it gives them even more courage to fight. They understand better why they have to fight for their country. They know that it is not for nothing that we are trying to destabilize ourselves. Despite the fact that we were able to change the situation in terms of equipment, training, if people still try to destabilize it, gives more arguments to the military to boost their morale and to fight. Thank you. Hervé Cabor joined us for the questions of the listeners. Hervé, it is your turn. Yes, Chantal Nikiman. My question is to Mr. Alassane Wadrago, who is calling us from Kaya in the North Center. He asks after the attack of Barsalbo, the public opinion wonders if sanctions have already been applied to the meeting of the responsible and accomplices, or are we in terms of justice and reparation for the victims of this tragedy? That is the question of Mr. Wadrago Alassane from Kaya. 
Thank you, Hervé. Mr. President, you have the floor to answer Mr. Wedrago. Okay, thank you. It must be said that after every attack since we have been there, after each attack, we try to analyze the situation to understand what worked and what did not work. As long as we can't do it, we can't improve the situation. So naturally, after the attack of Bar Salbo, on a military level, we must analyze what happened, what worked and what did not work. We are almost at the end of this investigation. I think the military authorities have been to Bar Salbo several times to investigate, to continue to investigate through Kaya. The responsibilities will be set in a few days. I am waiting for the result of the report, and the sanctions will fall. All the attacks, that's what we do. There have been attacks where we have often brought some people to their knees who have failed in their duties. Because we don't have a choice as long as we are committed, and we feel that the failure comes from the device, we have to get rid of it. So we are waiting for the final report to act. Regarding the victims, it is natural. We have adopted laws so that the children of those who would have lost their lives in this war, we recover them as a treasure of the nation. And those who have fallen, we take them as martyrs. The government is permanently on the side of the population to be able to take charge on the psychological side, on the humanitarian side health and everything, of all the members of the families who have been affected by this tragedy. Hervé Kabor has questions from the listeners. He joins us once again. Yes, I speak directly. Obviously, the listeners have still sent questions. This is Mr. Thomas Cafando from Zinhari. In relation to the local consumer, he asks, what are the strategies for an endogenous development based on made in Burkina products? And then Mr. Karim Zongo from FADA asks, you have governmental teams who are currently meeting the usual leaders. What are your expectations? Thank you, Hervé, for these two questions. Mr. President. Okay, thank you very much. I see that the concept of local consumer has been launched. It is very important to us. If you notice, first of all, in terms of investment, the first steps we took were an analysis of a certain number of factors. First of all, we have to promote what our artisans are putting into practice. That is, Faso Damfani, Coco Donda. This led us to reflect on the issue of towels, teachers' towels, which were imported expensively. We instructed the minister to change the towels. Today, it is done in Faso Damfani. The ladies who do it, there are many ladies who join the workshop, and it is a great achievement for the employees. Also, the instruction was given to the Ministry of Justice to change their towels to be able to adapt to our Faso Damfani and many other social classes, even in the army. I think if you have followed the minister's outfit, it is in Burkina Faso Damfani. There are many things that we try to promote locally and in many other areas, especially in transformed products. Currently, we are in the dynamic of promoting everything that can transform our raw materials. That is, food products, so that they are consumed by Burkina Faso, which led us to take a decree to institute the fact that if someone wants to import a product, no matter the product, as long as there are Burkina Faso that manufacture it, he must first take it to Burkina Faso, and when it is not enough, he can take it abroad. It is a strong act that we have taken to be able to encourage what is produced locally to be consumed by Burkina Faso. I think we are in a good dynamic. We cannot reveal the entire strategy because, as I said, those who are used to importing do not necessarily like to apply what we want. But if we want to be Burkina Faso, we have to take measures. It will not please others, but it will please a lot of people. I think that is the most important thing. Mr. Kato, I would like to know your expectations concerning your government teams that 
that are on the ground. Oui, donc ce sont des, yes, these are outings that were planned a little while ago. It is like the first outings that coincided with the events of Barcelona. We had planned several outings. When the event arrived, we told people to go and make the program. During this period, we stopped the Council of Ministers for a week. We want the ministers to go to the populations to acquire realities, to see the realities of the people and to come back. A minister is at the level of the decision. If you are just in Ouagadougou and you cannot understand the deep aspirations of the people, it is complicated. So this program will not be the first time. It will not be the last time. They went to the populations in all regions to acquire realities, to understand the difficulties. And I think that each minister will rearrange his program according to the real needs of our populations. It is the same state of mind that led us to go to the leaders because we want to put them back in their role. Their role is to maintain social cohesion, unity, peace. They have to assert themselves. They have to help us educate the youth. These are the messages that are brought to their place. Whatever we say, they are key actors of our society. And we want to put them back in their role so that they can help Burkina Faso to return to its ancestral values, which are values of peace unity and cohesion. Thank you for these insights. Mr. President, the news, security and defense are closely linked. As we gather the concerns of the listeners two years ago, under your impulse, Burkina Faso engaged in a total war against terrorist armed groups. Today, what is your assessment of the reconquest of the national territory? Thank you. We will stop talking about the situation on the ground because it is the essence of our fight. As you can see, I think that as soon as we started our actions, there was another face of terrorism that Burkina Faso has discovered. So it has challenged us a lot that it is not just terrorism. I think that the objective of these people is even greater than that. The last time I spoke about the fourth generation war, they manipulated a lot of people to put them against their brothers. Today, you look at the terrorists and at us, they are young people who are dying. So we have to stop it. We have to stop it quickly. To do it, we had to arm ourselves with courage, train ourselves, recruit, because the staff, the equipment, nothing was up to the task to be able to face it. I remember that the terrorists said that on December 31st, 2022, they were going to celebrate the end of the year in Ouagadougou. Then when we did the analysis, we realized that they could do it. What was going to stop them? I don't see. With the number they had, the dormant cells, if they activated on December 20th, they could celebrate in Ouagadougou, nothing could stop them, unless we call on the same powers that created them to intervene and enslave us. So when we took our responsibilities, you saw very quickly that we started to recruit both in the military sector and also at the level of the VDP to try to contain the threat. Today, the army is much more equipped than it has ever been. But we say that this is nothing. The equipment will come 10 times, many times more efficient than what we have. We will continue to recruit recruit to have a strong army, because independence, sovereignty, as long as you don't have a strong army, you can't assume it. So it will continue in this sense, and we will continue to face the threat. Regarding the fight against terrorism, some Bukinabe make the link between national reconciliation and the fight against terrorism. Do you understand their logic, Mr. President? There you have it, guys. So you have seen what Burkina Faso president is trying to explain there. He is actually the youngest president in the continent of Africa and he's actually beating above, you know, the weight of what many countries have been doing in Africa. And if you look at many countries in Africa, guys, we have so many presidents who are actually, you know, performing under 
the expectations of their citizens. But Africa has a young president. Africa has a revolutionary president in Burkina Faso president, Ibrahim Traore. You know, the man, the myth, the real incarnate of Thomas Sankara. Many people know the story of Thomas Sankara. He's one of the you know, most celebrated freedom fighters in the continent of Africa. And also he happened to be a military leader from the same country of Burkina Faso. Now, as we said in the beginning, guys, most of the time in these so-called third world countries, when you are trying to work actually for the best interest of your people, you know, you end up pissing very powerful people, very rich people, as Burkina Faso president has said, most of the time is that when your interest for the greater good of the country is not in their interest, actually, they end up, you know, plotting ways to, you know, delete you to actually, you know what I mean, and remove you from power. That is what has been happening, actually, many countries where we have had presidents where that are actually interested in nationalizing their mineral resources and working in the best interest of their country and their citizens. And Ibrahim Traore there is not an exception because since he took power, actually there have been over five attempts on his life to, you know, what I mean, actually, to actually remove him from power. And uh, they have tried many times, but this man is actually a military general. He's very careful in what he does. And we thank God that they have not actually been able to do that until now. But the region of the Sahel region, if you guys don't know, the Sahel region is located in North Africa, North West Africa. And uh, that region is actually affected by jihadist group, actually, that are, you know, terrorists attacking these countries and unaliving very many people. And uh, Burkina Faso is not an exception. It has been experiencing these terror attacks on his countries and that's what he has been explaining most of the time you find that these the jihadist groups in the sahel region they are actually you know financed by countries we cannot name on this platform otherwise you get shadow banned but you get what i mean you know most of the time it's a plot to destabilize a country so that its mineral resources can be looted or if not looted be exploited at a very very cheap price and they go into western countries first world developed countries and then they come back in form of products and then we are sold these products at a very very costly high rate and uh, burkina faso president there has been trying to nationalize very many mining companies mining operation in the country he has you know done a lot for his country and we pray that actually these attempts on his lives are not gonna be successful thank you guys for watching this far my name is joel mugisha what do you think about today's video and burkina faso president there addressing this problematic attempts on his life that he has faced and all the challenges that the country is facing Thank you very much for watching again. Remember to subscribe, like the video, share, drop a comment. And as always, guys, see you on the next one.